Hi Church, it's wonderful to be with you in part three of our series on Philippians. So Paul's letters to the church in Philippi are such a wonderful encouragement for us, particularly when we are facing challenging times. And that is because we know that Paul himself was imprisoned when writing them, likely to face death. Yet he writes with wonderful affection to his Christian brothers and sisters, and he encourages them to rejoice in the Lord and to focus on their salvation in Christ. So part one and two focus on how to pray full of joy and finding joy even when faced by severe challenges. Today, in part three, we move to chapter two of the book and look at joy in humility. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to reveal to us that by imitating Christ's humility, we ourselves will be exalted and find joy. Amen. So, what does Paul teach us? At the beginning of this second chapter, Paul paints the image of Christians being united in Christ and with each other by love and compassion for each other. And states in verse 3 then, in humility, value others above yourselves. And then comes this memorable passage between verses 5 and 11, where Paul suggests that our relationship with each other should follow the supreme example of Jesus Christ, who was God, but did not use his power to his advantage. Instead, Paul writes in verses 7 to 9, He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. What does all this mean? I want to suggest that it means that humility as exemplified by Jesus becoming a human and being crucified, is central to living a life as a Christian. And of course that means that we are challenged to live totally counter-cultural. Because whilst we live in a world that seems to celebrate success and boastfulness and trains and reward competitive and selfish behavior, we are told that we must humble ourselves if we are to be exalted. To be honest, my own failure to live up to this challenge has probably been the greatest obstacle to believe in and submit to Jesus Christ. And that is because most of my life I was very full of myself and did rather well in a culture that championed self-fulfillment and independence. My pride, my belief in my righteousness, prevented me from seeing and hearing my real purpose and salvation. So, as we are reflecting on our daily life as Christians, I would like to ask ourselves, how often, and not just around Easter, do we remind ourselves of the humility of Jesus Christ? How does that challenge us? And what would it look like for us to humbly submit to the will of God in our life right now? How can we with an attitude of humility, bless those around us today. 
Let us pray. Our Father, we pray that we learn from Paul what authentic humility looks like. That your Holy Scripture enables us to do this with real joy and that it encourages us to live this out and even in times when this seems very challenging to do, when it is hard to be humble. We pray that we indeed look at the example of your Son, our Father, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and that every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We pray that in the name of your Son. Amen.